and welcome back to another Creations with Christina episode. Today we're just making a little home decor project. I picked up six of these little wooden blocks from Joann's and if you're lucky and you have somebody that's handy that can cut you just one of these blocks, um, you can use whatever size you want. Um, I have uh, six of them. Um, I have some, Most of them are already, right here are already painted and I just wanted to show you kind of a little fall decoration that I'm working on. So I'm just taking my, um, this, I love these paint brushes. You can get them at uh, Michael's. They're my favorite. I have two of the one inch. Um, I have a good one that I use just for painting. And then I have another one that I use for my crackle medium. And I've done crackle, crackle medium uh, projects before, but just to remind you how to do it, I'm just using a base coat paint. And this is going to be um, a brown color. It's called Burnt Umber. I really prefer the coffee bean color. That's my favorite color. But I didn't have a lot of this left, so I didn't think I'd have enough to do my project, so I went with this color. And it's a nice, dark, rich uh, brown color. So I just squirt it right onto my craft mat. And my craft mat is by Tattered Angels. It's their uh, misting mat. And I love this thing. It's huge. It takes up a good portion of my desk. Um, and everything just wipes off of it nicely. So I had the Ranger one, and I still have that one. But I like to use this one because it actually covers more of my desk and I'm not spending as much time trying to clean stuff up off my desk. So so what you would do is you paint your base coat of the um, whatever color that you want on your base coat. This is the color that's going to crack through your paint. Um, so you paint that the color. I have to do the other two sides, but I'm going to let the other four sides dry first and then I will paint the rest of it. But in the meantime, I'll set that aside to dry. The next thing you want to do is I have some of these already done and I'm just going to take my crackle medium and this is by Folk Art. There's also, Ranger also has a crackle paint. It comes in little little buckets that you could buy at, and sorry for all the paint on my fingers, um, that you can get at uh, Michael's or order online and they automatically have the crackle medium in them so they crack whenever, uh, as soon as you paint them. I like to use this um, because then I can use whatever paints I have in my in my stash here. So. So I'm just going to squirt some of this right out on my craft mat here. And I'm going to take this paintbrush, and this is my older one that I use specifically for this. And you want to put your crackle medium on pretty thick. Um, and the reason you do that is because the thicker it is, the better the cracks you're going to get. And you want to use as little strokes as possible. So I'm going to do all four sides of this. And then I'll show you on another block um, while this one's drying how the crackle looks. Okay, so I added the crackle medium to five of the six sides on my blocks. So I have all my blocks pretty much done. Um, I decided not to do the bottom parts of these only because um, they're going to be hidden anyway. You're really not going to look at them. So, And you have to wait for this crackle medium to dry. Um, you want it, just a little tip, you want it to dry as much as you can by itself because the longer it dries by itself, the better the crackle will be. Um, but then after a while you can take your heat gun and just dry them up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish drying a couple of these just a little bit more. Um, I notice they're still a little bit wet. Alright, so I'll let the rest of these kind of dry by themselves. I'm going to show you pretty much what to do now. Um, the next thing is you're going to take your top coat. This is the layer that's going to be up on the top and it's going to crack and you're going to see the, bra the uh, brown through the crack. So I'm just going to use some of this. It's vintage white. I like uh, much prefer the parchment color um, by Folk Art, um, but like I said, I'm running out of that one too. That one I have a harder time finding. So, so I'm just going to take my paintbrush and paint on my top coat. And again, I'm using as little strokes as I possibly can, and I'm putting it on fairly thick, so I can only have to do one coat. And I am going to do all six sides, even though one side's not going to crack, because I didn't put the crackle medium on it. This is the side that doesn't have the crackle medium. And as this starts to dry, it'll start cracking. Can see it a little bit on this one. So I'm going to heat set this with my heat gun and you'll see the cracks come out more. A 
Okay, so can you see the cracks? That's what I really love about using the crackle medium is it gives it that real vintagey kind of look. Now you can see this one didn't really crack as much, so I'll probably put this like on the inside, and that's my bottom piece, so it stayed solid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the crackle on the other two sides of this, and then also my other blocks, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do with these after you've got them all crackled is I go ahead and I use take some vintage photo distress ink and I just go right around the edges. I already did them. Um, this one I just noticed needs a little bit more and it fades out pretty nicely. It's like, it goes on pretty dark, but it's gonna fade quite a bit once it's uh, dried up. So. so I do that and then I also took a couple pieces of burlap and I cut those to fit in um, these squares here. So I have one more that I have to ink up, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And again, I'm using Vintage Photo for everything. And that'll go right there. So the next thing I did was I cut out the word fall, and I just used my silhouette to do this. And I used um, some orange cardstock textured uh, coordinations canvas cardstock that I got at um, Joann's. And I just went ahead and cut those out, and I think I used the Apple uh, Chancery font from my computer to cut this out, and again, inked it up with the Vintage Photo. And then I also took this old Martha Stewart punch that I think I purchased at, um, I want to say Marshall's or TJ Maxx, when they had a whole bunch of these uh, punches for like $1.99 or something like that. So I punched out a whole bunch of those in a kind of brown maybe a little uh, craft kind of looking cardstock, and I inked those up as well with the vintage photo and I'm just going to kind of stick these in different places um, I'm going to move them probably around a little bit once I kind of glue everything down um, let's see I have one more so I'll probably stick it someplace and then I took some burlap and I got this at Michael's, and it looks just like this. It comes on this, uh, or not burlap, raffia, I'm sorry. And put it, I uh, took it and made a couple little bows. So I made one to go right on this side, and another one to go on this block. And that's my um, latest fall decoration that I was able to make just using some supplies that I picked up at Joann's and Michael's and some stuff I had around. I thought I would share with you one other project that I did using the same kind of technique uh, as I did on these blocks. And it, let me just scoot these out of the way. And it was with this picture frame, and this is just one of those dollar wooden picture frames that you can get at Michael's. I did the same technique. I uh, did the uh, crackled accent, um, except for the picture frame. What I did was I put some burlap in the back and then cut out the Tim Holtz tattered uh, leaves and stamp them and distress them with different um, distress inks and then also added a piece of raffia. And then I also, what I did was I painted my stick right into my um, board so that, or my frame so that I never lose it. But what I did was, is I actually made it, and I won't pop it out because it's hard, it is hard to get this uh, bow back inside. But I did it so I could pop this out and then in for Christmas I could take the same kind of um, maybe some burlap and put a snowman or something like that in the center of the frame so I can kind of change this out for different holidays. So I just wanted to share that with you, kind of coordinating a little decoration here for the fall. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.